I want to thank the mayor of Portland for having brought this to the city council. That's right. That's In part, he did it as part of a promise that he made to the Occupy Portland people that he would address the question of corporate personhood. So he is doing that with this resolution. And we support him doing that, but we do want to have some changes made to the resolution before it's actually passed and becomes city policy. I also want to thank the Occupy movement. We have been struggling for a very long time to end corporate domination, to end corporate personhood, and to make clear that money is not speech. No one has paid attention to us. But with the beginning of the Occupy movement, suddenly this issue is spreading around the nation. And every time, or most every time, the, the Occupy movement speaks, they always bring up the issue of corporate personhood. And for that, we are very thankful. And then while we're saying thank you, we also need to say thank you to the U.S. Supreme Court. <laughs> because with their decision, the Citizens United decision, in January of 2010, they so overreached. They exhibited so much hubris that the American people immediately understood that their democracy was in danger of being lost forever. And so for that, we need to also thank the U.S. Supreme Court. <laughs> I think we probably all know the history of corporate personhood. We know that the U.S. Constitution does not mention corporations at all. It talks about we the people, and we know who we are. Are we the people? Yes! Are corporations the people? No! Are we the people? Yes! Are corporations the people? No! Thank you. Corporations are not the people. So, in 1886, the U.S. Supreme Court issued a decision in the Santa Clara, uh, Santa Clara County versus the Southern Pacific Railroad. And the clerk said in the head notes that the Supreme Court had said that corporations have human rights. Well, they didn't say that, but that's what the clerk said. And on the basis of that false statement, a whole slew of additional decisions have come from the Supreme Court saying that corporations have our rights. And they have given our rights, our Fourth Amendment rights, against search and seizure to corporations. They have given Fifth Amendment rights against government takings, uh, and they deemed that regulations can be takings. Ooh. They gave Sixth Amendment rights to trial by jury in both civil and criminal cases to corporations. And when we say that they gave this to them, these are things that corporations didn't have before until the Supreme Court gave them. They gave, obviously, they gave First Amendment rights. Those of you who were around in the, uh, the mid-60s, you'll remember, and these made headlines on the newspapers. These weren't buried in the back pages. They, uh, the Supreme Court issued their Buckley versus Vallejo uh, decision. <coughs> And they also issued their Boston versus Bellotti decision, which allowed corporations to spend money on initiative and referendums, which they hadn't been able to do. Okay. Uh, obviously, you all know that the Citizens United case very recently freed up 
corporations to take money directly out of their corporate treasuries to spend on so-called independent campaigns. And each time that they have given these rights to corporations, they have taken rights from us or they have diminished our ability to be sovereign in our own nation. This is a recent example of how this plays out. And this was reported in the Oregonian just a couple weeks ago. Tobacco companies had sued the FDA over rules requiring graphic displays on cigarette packaging. Uh, per the Oregonian story, tobacco companies want to block requirements, quote, while deciding the labels violate their free speech. That's the corporation's free speech rights. The judge ruled that it is likely the cigarette ma makers will succeed in their lawsuit. So the FDA said that tobacco companies would have to put large graphic displays on the packages which would uh, the cigarette companies said would likely influence people not to smoke. And the cigarette companies said they don't want to have to do that because they have a free speech right to put on the label whatever they want. And so they're claiming free speech rights and the judge that's going to make the decision has already said that most likely they're going to be given the right to determine exactly what goes on those labels. So that's the kind of decision making that we should be able to decide, we should be able to regulate, and we're not able to because corporations claim free speech rights. So what we're doing here today is we're number one supporting the, the, the city council in passing a resolution to make it legislative policy for the city of Portland uh, that we support ending corporate dom ending corporate personhood excuse me amending the constitution to make clear that corporations are not people and that money is not speech the other thing that we want to do today is we want the city council to remove the word same the city council's resolution says that corporations should not have the same constitutional rights as people Corporations should have no rights. Corporations should have no constitutional rights, to be specific. Okay? Human beings have constitutional rights. Corporations should not. So we want them to remove the word same. The other thing that we want them to do is remove the references to the Merkley Amendment, proposed constitutional amendment, as well as a reference to the uh, Representative Schrader const proposed constitutional amendment because they just don't go far enough. They're a good start. We need to thank Representative Schrader and we need to thank Senator Merkley for their efforts and we need to ask them to start looking at the whole question. Okay, so that's what we're doing here today. We're also, one last thing that we want to do today is we are going to ask the city to refer the question to the voters. Okay? Because we want to vote. We want to vote. The myth of corporate personhood is slowly and surely unraveling as people in city after city across this country pass resolutions like the one proposed by our mayor Sam Adams to the city council of Portland. Corporate greed has finally gone too far. No longer are we content to breathe the air they pollute, drink the water they dirty, eat the food they genetically modify, give them tax breaks so that they can send our jobs overseas and then complain that the teachers of our children earn a decent living. The American people have matured since the psychedelic haze of the 1960s. We see through the divide and conquer strategy of the 
the very same tactics that in the past used the fiction of white superiority to undermine the true power and dignity of both white and black Americans to keep both groups divided and in their places. Well, today we stand in all of our white, black, yellow, brown, and red glory as friends, sisters, brothers, fathers, and mothers, and we say no to the corporate kidnapping of our children's futures. Parents work so hard to keep their children safe and out of harm's way. We rightly fear the rogue individuals who would injure and traumatize the precious lives in our loving care. But there is a threat which no prison can contain. This force doesn't care if your child suffers pollution-driven asthma, doesn't care about the BPA in your baby's bottle, and, and insists that it's having to tell you what is being dumped into our rivers violates its right to privacy. This force is not about people, it's about money. And it's time for us to take this country back for the people our children will become. We wouldn't throw our children to a pack of rabid wolves, yet our corporations have ravaged our economy, are eating their way through our health care, education, and social safety nets, and have torn the job market and the environment to shreds. Corporations are playing a game where they unilaterally change the rules whenever they feel like it. As children wisely know, the game's no fun if the rules are stacked. Most parents I know would never allow a stranger to have access to their children. Yet dubious strangers float into our homes through the television and computer, advertise in our schools. Well, we're the adults around here. Ending corporate personhood is the single greatest gift we can give to our children and far better than the cheap lead-laced toys which all too often make their way from the corporate-owned owned toy stores into our children's bedrooms. Yeah. The corporate personhood issue is an umbrella under which every important issue of the day falls, from the environment to social justice to consumer safety, health care, education, campaign finance reform, and on and on. So why are we here today? for our children, and for our future. So let's all make some noise right now. Our children, our future. 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 In conclusion, Mayor Adams, Portland City Council, Please vote for a strong resolution that is not watered down with references to the Udall, Merkley, or Schrader proposals. Corporations are not people, and money is not speech. And please refer to this issue to the voters of Portland so that we can say to the world that the thing we find most controversial about the issue of corporate personhood is the idea that a mere corporation could ever be mistaken for the precious human lives that we have brought into this world, our children. Thank you. We appreciate each and every one of you, and only together can we change corporate personhood. Corporations are a business, okay? They are not people. And you've heard this recounted time and time again. But what I want to know right now, are you all fired up? Yeah! Are you all fired up? Yeah! Okay, then join in with me because money is not speech. Right. All right. Let me hear you say, money is not speech. We support being here today, you know, and being able to make and create a voice for all of us. We have lacked a voice in the Congress. We have lacked a voice in terms of what we desire, what we need. Are we the people? Yeah. Let me hear you say, are we the people? Yeah. Are we the people? Are we the people? Yeah. Are corporations the people? No! Are corporations the people? No! All right. Then we have established a firm resolution for ourselves today as we move into city council. You know, I want to thank each and every one of you once again for coming out. I'm going to be in the forefront with Dave and everyone else in terms of establishing a new paradigm for our community. A new paradigm and our future. Our children are our future. Let me hear you say this. Our children are our future. Our children are our future. 
And as le unless we are making the impact that we need to make, those children will never see a future. We cannot rely on corporate personhood. Again, corporations are a business. That's right. Corporations, let me hear you say it again, are a business. Corporations are a business. They are not a part of our daily grind. We suffer each and every day because of the decisions that corporations make. And no representation, not any representation for the people or the interests of the people are our children. Our children are most important because they lead the future. And if we don't set an example today, if we don't set an example as we move into 2012, then our children will be a continuation of NCLB, No Child Left Behind, because they'll be all in prison. Uh, that's right. So yeah, we stand together, right. and we move together, and we can effect the changes that we need. And so I will, again, for the third time, I want to, it's cold this morning, I want to thank each and every one of you. You know, this has been great. And let me identify myself, this is not a political situation in this essence that I am campaigning, but I am a congressional candidate for District 3 with the Pacific Green Party. And I've established an African-American party, political party, called the 19th of June Green, which joins in with you, which joins in with the occupiers. We have been to 99% for so long yes, as an African-American yeah. that it is good to step into a new revelation, revolution, a new understanding, and bring us all together because they destroyed the middle class, and now we're all in the same boat together, and now we can make a difference, we can make a change, and we can go to Washington, D.C. and push our interests, our agenda, and our children into the future. Our union is about a 900 member person union who is facing uh, budget cuts in the city of Portland at the Bureau of Transportation, which are the people who do the street maintenance and a lot of the work that you see around the city, um, and the parks maintenance. Uh, we're facing budget cuts and layoffs there. Um, in transportation, $16.2 million and perhaps 60 to 100 layoffs are going to happen. Um, that will directly affect everybody's services here. Um, and we are saying that the city of Portland should not be run like a corporation. Right. We are researching the city of Portland's budget and we know that the city has money and it's a matter of political will to put the resources towards the services that benefit all of us. So we are asking city council today, who's going to authorize a resolution that would um, implement a employee transition services program, which we've been pressuring them to do in order to uh, mitigate the effects, uh, the bad effects of layoffs. But we are also saying the city has money and that these cuts to services shouldn't happen. And we're asking all the public, all our neighbors to support us, support our union, not only because our jobs, our lives are at stake, but also because cuts to services are going to happen and the public is at stake here.